Rest, recovery, relaxation is what we're talking about today on the Rise Podcast because most people are getting it wrong. When it comes to anything to do with rest and recovery, if you're actively doing, you've got it wrong. The thing that I value more than anything is three things. It is authenticity, it is transparency, and it is vulnerability. Appreciate you for being here. Let's get into the video. Welcome to another episode of the Rise Podcast. I'm Dave, and today, like I said, we're talking all about rest, relaxation, sleep, and recovery. The reason why I wanna bring this up is because in my 12 and a half years of being a personal trainer, I have seen people smash, absolutely annihilate themselves inside of the gym, which has been great because they've got great results. At the same time, a lot of the people that I've worked with have been, I don't know, like type A personality sort of thing, just want to smash and grind and push and, you know, all the things because they're the motivated ones. They're the ones that pay for a personal trainer to get them to the next level of conditioning or strength or whatever it is. When it comes to rest, relaxation and recovery with those people, you have to kick them out of the gym. You have to force them to do absolutely nothing. And that's one of the biggest problems is because I don't know when this trend started of cold plunges and saunas and fucking compression leg things and all the rest of it for recovery, but it's wrong. It's not completely wrong. There's room for all of it. However, it's majority of it is wrong. To rest and recover from training, you need to do nothing. No recovery training sessions, no recovery cardio, no active recovery. Like sure, you can get a bit of a movement, you know, go for a bit of a walk sort of thing, but anything that is to do with training, whether it's skill-based, technique-based, anything like that, you're still training. So your central nervous system, your psychology, your metabolic functions, everything is, you're doing the opposite of what you need. Today is a rest day for me. That's why I'm filming it on today. I was meant to have three clients this morning, two clients in the middle of the day, two clients in the afternoon, and my middle two clients had to move. One of them canceled because they're sick. Today is a rest day for me. So that means that my entire day from nine o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in the afternoon completely opened up and I've been enjoying doing three lots of bugger roll. Internally, mentally, I wanna continue doing stuff. I wanna continue pushing as hard as I can. However, I know with the level of DOMS that I feel in my biceps, in my back, my chest is pretty fresh. I'll be able to train that tomorrow, maybe Thursday, Thursday. I know that I can't do anything else because the level of DOMS that I have 24 hours after training in my biceps, because I've started doing new volume, new rest periods and stuff like that. Been following Mike from RP, um, what is it? Renaissance periodization. Been following his stuff and listening to his tidbits. And I've started changing my training based around his recommendations. It's working out really well. Sitting at about 115 kilos, probably 18% body fat. It's not where I want to be. However, it's doing pretty good. I'm in a cutting phase at the moment, so I need all the rest that I can get. Training jujitsu three to five times a week plus three weight sessions a week is exhausting. So when I schedule in a rest day, it's an actual rest day. I'm going to go for a bit of a stroll in a little bit, but that's it. That's all it's going to be is for a stroll. I just need to get moving because I've been cooped up inside all day the best underutilized performance enhancer for any kind of training stimulus, even mental recovery, is sleep. If you're not sleeping between seven and nine hours per night, you're robbing yourself of getting back to what your baseline is, getting back to your best, especially as a bloke. One thing that happens when you're stressed out of your mind, too much training, too much work, you know, too much misses nagging in your ear, whatever it is, when there's too much and you're in overload, you're about to go into overwhelm burnout sort of thing, your testosterone production plummets. Your appetite goes through the roof. Your satisfaction hormones in terms of uh, insulin and leptin, they reduce and you end up wanting to binge eat, you, you get a little bit more snarky. Testosterone plummeting means that effort doesn't feel good anymore because you don't have the same level. Estrogen rises, like all these things are going on because you're stressed out of your mind. And the best thing that you can do is go to sleep. Give yourself a solid nine hour sleep. If you have weekends free and you don't have kids, you can go to bed at a reasonable time and sleep. Maybe you know use some THC oil or something like that to get you to sleep if you don't like going to sleep that early. But you can sleep. That is the number one thing that you can do is to do nothing and just rest and relax. Like today, I'll play a little bit of Xbox, listen to some podcasts, made some content, made some hypnosis tracks, 
Um, I've been doing stuff, but I haven't been in the gym. I haven't been at jujitsu. I fucking want to because I, I live in the gym, but it's my rest day. And if you're not resting at least one day per week, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Majority of the time when it comes to beginners, when they get into the gym, I just said, I did some member outreach at the gym uh, yesterday and there's a guy in there. He sent me a text message saying, I've fallen off my routine. You know, I started really good. You know, I was going every day uh, and then work got really busy and, you know, I got busy with the kids and stuff like that. I don't have time. Bullshit. Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. Yes, everyone has different circumstances, but it's up to you and your values what you prioritize because we all have the exact same 24 hours a day. Me, I'm a 35 year old father who's a personal trainer, hypnotherapist and all the other things that I do. I can still train seven times a week. My life is health and fitness. Your life isn't health and fitness, not unless you're you know, very similar boat to what I am. I have all of the pressures on my shoulders to provide, to you know, secure, to look after my family, to nurture, to all that sort of stuff. The same that you guys do. And I choose because my life is prioritized in a way that I can train as much as I can, as much as I can recover, I should say. So if you're, here's something interesting. If you're waking up as a bloke without a morning hello, you're not doing well. If you're not waking up in the morning with, you know, old mate saying hello, you're probably stressed out of your mind, probably burnt out, not sleeping enough, too much caffeine, too much, just too much. You need to pull back. You need to start putting too much into rest and recovery. I know for myself that being a previous steroid user, that my natural system, it's not good. <laughs> I have to use things like you know ashwagandha and Tonkat Ali and Shilajit, all these other things to be able to give myself a natural boost because I fucked with myself when I was young. If you're not having the arousal first thing in the morning, or it takes a little bit to get you in the mood sort of thing, you're so tired, you just, you don't even want to be intimate, that's a massive red flag. And that's not just for men either. Women, if you don't have libido, if you don't have life force, you have nothing. One of my favorite books, and I talk about it a lot on the, on the channel, is Think and Grow Rich. There is an entire chapter dedicated inside of that book based on sex transmutation based on how important our sex energy is to everyday life, to make manifest, to you know, going and fucking kicking goals. Ultimately, everything comes down to our life force and libido. And our life force as a bloke is our testosterone. And for women, it's estrogen, progesterone. When you have none of that, life sucks. The lowest my testosterone has been on the Australian scale is like, I think it was 8.5 last, uh, last time I had it measured years ago. That sucks. That's like suicidal ideation. That's not sleeping very well, rapid weight gain. Like it's not a good place to be. You need testosterone. And yes, obviously, disclaimer, I'm just a personal trainer. I don't have a degree or a doctorate in endocrinology or anything like that. We've all been around the bodybuilding forums. We've all, you know, listened to the pros talk and, you know, on T Nation, the shadow pro and stuff like that. Like the information's out there. And you know your own body if you've studied, if you've you know used uh, used gear and stuff like that yourself. You know. So obviously, I'm just making wide sweeping generalizations. I'm not talking specifically to one person, but if it resonates, there's probably a reason. If you're not aroused the same way that you get aroused to eat food, like think of it. When was the last time that you went out for you know I don't know burgers and ice cream or something like that? And all of the desire factors were there. You were thinking about the meal pre, uh, pre-meal. pre You couldn't wait to get your hands on it. You couldn't. You didn't even know what you were going to choose, but you were just so damn excited. You were so hungry, even to the point of maybe being hangry. And then you get that thing and it's the most orgasmic, sensual experience. All of your senses are going off. You're really enjoying your burger and your fries and your drinks and all these sorts of things. And you go grab your ice cream and it's so gluttonous and so over the top. And then your body finally starts releasing the right amount of leptin to say, hey, we're no longer into this anymore. And maybe the last few bites of your ice cream you don't want and you throw it out or you give to your partner or you binge eat like I used to. That's that's what our bodies are meant to do. Our bodies are intuitive. They're meant to give us signs, signals and feedback so that we know what's going on internally. So again, the analogy that I use for food is the same that I use for being aroused for anything, being aroused for your relationship, for intimacy, for going to the gym, getting your work done in your business or like whatever it is. There is an arousal factor with everything. 
And if you're just not that aroused, there's a fucking problem. You're not resting enough. Now, I know I said a bit of a gripe with the active recovery sort of thing. And I've done it. I, I love ice baths. I hate the sauna. The sauna can go suck a dick. But when it comes to anything to do with recovery, sleep is the number one. Supplements don't do shit. Supplements aren't going to help you recover. They might give you a few little percent here and there. But the thing with supplements, they're designed to supplement your nutrition. Yeah, we've got fake food in the world, but you know, it is what it is. You should, you should be able to eat everything. Go back to the Australian dietary guidelines from 10 years ago. The two and five rule. Two pieces of fruit, five serves of veg every single day, lean protein, little bit of fat, and then you're pretty much golden. If you do that, you'll get the results that you've always wanted. But most people don't because they're not, they're not about to switch things up to go from having a case of beer down to a six pack of beer when they go around to a party or whatever it is. And instead of having you know six beers a night, they swap it down to one or going and eating a tub of ice cream, go for a cone. Like that swapping campaign of managing your expectations, managing how much food that you can consume, everything in moderation, that shit works. I've, like I said, I've been a personal trainer for 12 and a half years. I can like diet people. I can legally diet people. I'm covered to diet people. I've done it for so long. Hundreds of people gotten into shape. And the food that you enjoy eating goes into your nutrition plan. You don't need to cut things out. Carbs are not evil. Fats aren't evil. Protein isn't evil. Meat isn't evil. There's no inherent good or bad when it comes to food. Food isn't a moral judgment. Food is fuel. Food has... Protein, fats, carbs, micronutrients inside of it. Sure, some of the packaged stuff has preservatives. Everyone wants to demonize numbers and codes and all that kind of stuff. Stop overcomplicating life. Eat real food, go to the gym, train hard, but then fucking recover, sleep well. Like do everything well. So many people spend so much time inside of the gym, going to, you know, going to running clubs and all these sorts of things. They burn themselves out. Wonder why they're going backwards. Wonder why they're starting to get injured. Oh, I've got this niggling shoulder. Yeah, because you're not giving it enough time to be able to rest and recover. All the information that's sitting inside of it is sitting inside of it because of the volume and the frequency that you're doing. If you're a beginner, two days a week. Two days a week is enough inside of the gym. If you're more towards an intermediate, start bumping it up to three. If you're doing two to three full body workouts every single week, you're going to see gains that you've never seen before. Strength gains, size gains, dropping body fat because of the higher basal metabolic rate because of the more muscle. You know, the if you start eating well, you get the thermogenic effect of food. Like you start sleeping well, your fucking testosterone goes through the roof. Like it's net good. It's net good. Like I can't stress it enough. You need to not overexert yourself. Like I've been training bodybuilding for 20 years now. In that 20 years, I've done pretty much every stupid fad that's come like come out of every flex magazine and muscle development, muscular development. I've done every dumb training plan. I've done, you know, uh, what was his name? Rich Piano. I've done his stupid volume arm workouts and stuff like that. It does, it does nothing. You need to rest. If anything, 12 to 16 sets three times a week will give you better results than anyone else in the gym that's working hard five, six days a week or even doing doubles. Give yourself enough time to miss the gym, to have that arousal factor to go, fuck you, I get to train. I can't wait to train. Today I get to train this, I get to do squats, I get to, you know, and have that arousal factor to train. There's going to be times where you're not going to have that arousal factor, but you're actually at the peak of your ability and you're actually about to hit PBs and go past where you thought you could. That's why you have to check in with yourself and know yourself. Everything that I talk about with the rise movement is to know thyself. If you know yourself and you're self-aware and you're self-critical, but then you can also do something about it, you've won the game. You're your own coach. You do what to yourself what I do for everyone else that pay me good hard-earned money. When you have the ability to reflect and to go, okay, am I bullshitting myself with how much I'm training? I'm not really enjoying it. I'm burnt out all the time. I'm forcing myself to do something that I just don't really care about and I don't have the drive and the determination to be able to do. I've got a bit of a niggling, you know, sort of a thing in my elbow. Like, what am I doing? That's your chance to be able to look yourself in the mirror and go, what do I want? How long do I want it? What's the time frame that I want it in? You need to be able to quantify all of these things because if you don't know the parameters around what you're doing, the fuck are you doing it for? I talk a lot about psycho-spiritual alchemy. The way that this comes in 
a more mythopoetic worldview is because we live in two worlds. And I've said this before on the podcast, we live in two worlds, a physical world, physical world, and also a spiritual world. And the spiritual world comes up of the mental, emotional, spiritual aspect of life. To be able to have that dialogue between the unconscious, yourself, and the conscious mind, dialogue meaning to die, and to be able to have the logos move between one another, fuck, sound like Jordan Peterson, Jesus Christ. It is so fucking important. You have a part of you that is smarter than you could than your wildest dreams, smarter than anyone else on the planet, but every single human has an unconscious, has a higher conscious mind to be able to get the, you know, the downloads and the clarity and give yourself your own advice, coach yourself through shit. Start talking to yourself and figure out what you actually want. What's the purpose of it? Like legit, what's the purpose of it? How much do I need to rest? Do I really know or am I bullshitting myself? And if you ever come up with anything that says, I don't know, if you say, I don't know, if I was to know, what would it be? And the first thing that comes up into your mind, that's the thing that you run with. So rest and recovery, yeah, we can do active sessions sparingly. But if you're training hard out, like say if you're doing bodybuilding training, like I'm doing a lot of bodybuilding at the moment, trying to get as big as possible, I'd like to stay stay around 115 at the moment. It's hard cardio wise, but the changes that I've noticed in my jujitsu and the pressure that I can put down and how I can stop people moving makes all the all the benefit. It's big guy jujitsu, you know, pin someone on the floor, make it, make sure they can't move, position over submission, so on and so forth. Training bodybuilding, you really get six to eight weeks if you're lucky, if everything else is perfect before you need a deload. If you're doing everything perfect, you're ticking off your macros, you're getting your micros in, enough water, the right amount of sleep, seven to nine hours every single day, you're getting the right amount of steps in. If you're in a calorie deficit and you want to lose some fat, maybe you're bumping up your steps by a thousand or two per day, like you're covering all bases. You're supplementing to be able to help get convenience. Like everything's covered. You get six to eight weeks before you need a deload, before you need to go back into a different cycle of training or re- redo the same cycle of training. If you're trying to train six days a week, it's like four weeks before you need a deload. If you're trying to do every single day, it'll be two weeks before you need a deload if you're training properly. And this is a whole other argument that we'll probably go into in another video is most people don't train hard enough to be able to warrant a deload every you know four to six weeks sort of thing. That's a whole other video. We'll go there in another time. For now, when it comes to rest and recovery, that dialogue between you and your unconscious, that other part of you is really important to figure out, one, are you resting enough? Two, how's your recovery? What's your psychological state like? What's the arousal factor like? Three, am I physiologically attracted to the, the task that I'm meant to do? And if not, you're not ready. That's a great rule of thumb. If, if you're not, you're not ready. There's going to be a give and take. Like I said earlier, there's going to be a give and take where you go into the gym and you have a great session, even though you didn't feel like you wanted to. The other day, I didn't want to go to jujitsu and it was one of my favorite sessions of the week. There's nuance to all of this. Don't make it hard and fast rules, even though I did make some wild sweeping generalizations. However, everything is a dialogue. Everything is communication. Everything starts mentally first. Because what's the reason you got into the gym? What's the reason that you wanted to get in shape or whatever it is? It started with a purpose. It started with a purpose that only you know what is. For me, it was because I wanted to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. I wanted to be Superman. I wanted to be Jean-Claude Van Damme. I wanted to see myself being like the movie stars and you know the comic book heroes and stuff like that that I looked up to because I didn't have that great representation of masculinity in my life. They're all fucking drunk fuckwits. So I dissociated from that and I went, okay, what's the next best thing that I can look at? And look at the amount of Superman shit around me. I, and I've got a massive tapestry here. I adore Superman. Superman is still like a massive, it's almost like a compass, like my North Star and navigating towards what it is to be, you know, the ideal upstanding man that's of service and stuff like that. That dialogue that you have with yourself, creating... (sighs) a more vibrant, a more juicy, a more exciting worldview, something that's not dead, something that's not materialist, reductionist, just boring, measurable. Bleh. Life is is a playground. One of the greatest lessons that I had from a plant medicine experience I had a couple of years ago is that this is a playground. We have so much available to us. 
And if we start bringing that childlike curiosity and excitement to things, you'll be able to see things through a different lens. There is literally magic all around you 24 seven. So one thing that I wanna start doing in all aspects of health and wellness, just because I've been doing it for myself and it's been working really well, is to bring more of that mythopoetic, psycho-spiritual alchemy to everyday things. There's gonna be a lot more things that I'm doing on the channel, on YouTube mainly, because it probably won't go up on audio podcast, but I'm gonna start doing reaction videos to new music that bands that I've heard or haven't heard and stuff like that. But I'm gonna do it from a unconscious hypnotherapy sort of perspective. I wanna go through understanding what it was like for me to experience music and the emotion that it invoked in us because the things that we consume, consume us back. So if we're listening to say Bad Omens, for instance, when I listened to the Concrete Jungle album a couple of months ago, I went through like this massive dark night of the soul. It caused me to reconcile with my previous relationship where I went through some abuse and domestic violence and stuff like that. And it helped me heal a hell of a lot. I took all of my journalings and stuff like that to one of my counselors and she couldn't believe the things that I unpacked in my mind just by listening to some music. I know that's one of the main reasons why I listen to the stuff that I do when I listen to, you know, metal, metalcore or, you know, like anything like that. One, the music's fucking pure gold, but at the same time, I'm listening to the lyrics. I'm listening to the way that the vocalist is expressing their heart and soul because essentially when you get up and you make music like that and you bear your soul much like my animus sleep token video that is a part of you that is a part of the unconscious version of you and if you're bringing that beautiful oozy deep rich stuff from the unconscious into the worldview and you're doing it in an art form that is going to interact with other people and it's going to make them it's going to make them lose their minds Look at Beatles hysteria, look at you know Bon Jovi, um, all of the hair metal uh, phases that we went through. Look at Michael Jackson. Look at the hysteria that they've all created from the music, from the lyrics. There's magic inside of the words that we say. You know, abracadabra, ancient, I think it's Aramaic or Hebrew. I speak, therefore I create. So imagine what singing does. And now imagine if you're singing along to some music that has some pretty negative lyrics, some pretty disgusting sort of stuff. What's the emotion that's gonna be invoked inside of you? What is the thing that your unconscious is going to consume from that music into your psyche that's going to make you feel, think, and act in certain ways? What about all the hip hop lyrics? Guns, women, fighting, drugs, gun, like, Silence is pretty loud. Just remember that everything that you consume consumes you back. This could probably be two podcast episodes, but I'll probably just put it up as once and just use it for clips. I'm going to say it now. And I'm a little bit nervous to say it, but I'm back. And I'm ready to get shit started. I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the year because the year hasn't gone the way that I thought it was going to. I've hit probably only four out of my 12 odd goals for the year. Most of them financial. Some of them are about to come to pass. Like my main goal for this year in Jiu Jitsu was to get my purple belt. So everyone's talking at the gym that I, you know, I'm very close, which is cool. Purple belt doesn't mean anything. It just means that I'm pretty much halfway through the journey. But it's it's a marker and a nod from my professors to say, yeah, you're on the right journey. You're on the right path. But for everything else, it's weird. So I don't know what's going to happen for the rest of this year. I'm open to whatever. Like I'm, you know, universe, God, creator, whatever you want to call it. Like, give me some surprises. Show me some cool shit. Show me some cool shit. And if I can help some other people along the way, that'll be even better. It'll be even, even better. So anyway, guys, much love. Take care. Follow me to rise higher. And remember that active recovery doesn't do shit. Go to sleep. Go to fucking sleep. Much like that beautiful Viking man says. What's his name? Anyway, he says, go to sleep. So do exactly that. Anyway, much love. Follow me to rise higher. You know what you need to do. Like, 
comment, share this around, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for all of the awesome things coming out of Rise because we're only just getting started. Thank you so much for being here watching another video. Much love, take care, and follow me to Rise Higher.